Hey guys, today I'm going to show you all how to use a 12 position trim pot to do some offsets uh, to boost and timing and whatnot. So if you don't know what a trim pot is, uh, these are from AEM. These are the ones that I end up using. We have had uh, good luck with them. So what it is, is it's a 12 position dial, right? And it locks at certain spots and then they give you a sticker to a couple different stickers to put on whatever the panel is that you put it through. And basically you look at this as if it's a five volt sensor. Okay. So when wiring this thing up, um, you know, you've got five volt, you got sensor ground, and then you got a signal wire. So we mounted in the car, we terminated, you know, back to the ECU, and now we've got a, a new input. So we have to create the input and we go into Holly software. We would go into the uh, input output, ICF and I just label them 12 position switch. It's a five volt type input and there's really nothing to configure except for selecting type five volt. So it's all the way down to the bottom. So once you have the input uh, created, what you'll have to do is go online with the ECU and bring up your gauge panel. And here it is. So if you don't know how to do this, you just double click and you select the channel that you're using right so 12 position switch it'll be all the way at the top because it's numeric um, make your value format you know 1.23 make your tick format whatever you want really it doesn't doesn't matter and then hit okay and now it will tell you the voltage that is being sent to the ecu through the trim pot so right now it is in position one right or position zero depending on whatever sticker you use. And as you turn it, if you listen, it locks into place at certain voltages. So the easiest way to go about this is write down all your voltages and what your position is so that you have a reference so that you can start building advanced tables. So we can go all the way over here to position 12. And of course we could, we could remake the sensor or remake the sensor input to be a custom five volt and label each position, but I just go based off of voltage. Um, so, because if you wiggle this switch a little bit or if it's vibrating a little bit, it can it can move. So I like to just go based off of voltages. So uh, what we're going to do here is now we've got a reference for voltage, right? So if we go to position zero, it does nothing. Position one, or a 0.44 volts. So if we go and look at our advanced tables, I just did a few demos here to kind of give you an idea of how this works. Uh, this is a position one boost increase, right? Let me go offline. So a position one boost plus. So this is a boost offset, right? So you would select your table type, and uh, this would be a boost offset. And then your uh, what I use is a boost, an x-axis of boost time. So we've already got a, a curve, right? So we already have a boost versus time curve here. But if we just wanted to speed that up or get a little bit more in it, you know, uh, up top or, you know, whatever we want to do, what I like to do is copy your x-axis here, go into our advanced table, right? And then we just go paste and now we've got the same x-axis right so um so the x-axis matches so if we wanted to increase say we wanted to add two pounds to the ramp right um what we're doing is we're just adding two pounds across the whole way and i always leave the last one zero but uh if we only wanted to increase maybe we want to increase by one oh we want to add five pounds on the top of the run you know, from 1.0 on up, we wanted, we don't want to change anything right there on the release of the button. We can do that. So now what we're doing is we're exponentially adding more and more dome pressure here to the already existing boost curve. So this can be handy with a turbo car when you're in the staging lanes and, um, you know, you see, hey, uh, man, the track's killer. Turn it up to one, you know, or turn it up to two or whatever it may be. The on conditions for this is, uh, I did, uh, for this example, uh, we don't want to offset anything while it's on the trans brake, right? And then this table will activate when the 12 position switch is above 0.3 volts and below 0.6 volts, right? So when it's in that range, it's going to activate this table. So 
uh, that's a, a pretty simple, basic, you know, boost plus. This is another example of that. Now where we're adding 10 pounds of dome pressure in the run. Uh, here is a timing retard, right? So we can do this when it's in position three, which is, you know, 1.1 to 1.4 volts. Uh, what we're doing is we are using boost time again, and we're going to retard eight degrees, and then we're going to ramp it back in across one second. So if you, you know, if you look at the track, or if you've got a lineup guy and he looks at you and says, hey, man, this is, this is, uh, this racetrack sucks, you know, you can do it with this 12 position switch. You can also do this with a virtual switch as well on the dash, uh, which a lot of people do, and, 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 you know, we end up setting up a lot of those. Uh, but I just figured I would show you guys a, another, um, you know, another option here. So these things are relatively cheap. They're very simple to wire in. Uh, I believe they're like 60 bucks or 70 bucks, something like that. They're readily available everywhere. And they um, they come in handy if you've got a, a turbo car, for sure a turbo car. I like them with, with turbo cars. Blowers, not so much because, you know, you're, you're typically, if you've got to do a timing retard, do a virtual switch or, um, you know, you're just changing the tune-up before you go and make a pass. The, uh, the turbo cars, these seem to work pretty good. Uh, and again, nitrous cars, if you're really after it with nitrous, you should be making some changes in the tune-up between rounds anyway. So uh, this is kind of just a, you know, a, uh, um, a caveat for, or this is like kind of like a little luxury for the, the turbo world and maybe the nitrous world. So uh, hopefully this answers any questions you guys have about how to do this. It's a, uh, it's pretty simple setup, but it does come in handy. The hardest part about this is remembering which position does what. So you can, um, you know, if you wanted to, you could, you know, make a little marks on your, on your little sticker that they give you so that you know, Hey, don't go to here, you know? Um, but that's about the hardest thing to do. And just showing you another way to overcomplicate an easy process. So hopefully this answers some questions for y'all. Have a good one.